On today's edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast, we're going to tell you why Jalen Hurts is the definitive MVP favorite in the NFL right now. Plus, stock up after a huge win against the Bills. Shaq Leonard, watch all that and more on this Tuesday edition of Locked On Eagles. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. of the Lockdown Eagles podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use our code Lockdown NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We thank you so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day, right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. I'm Louis DiBiase, joined as always by Gino Camilleri. It's a Tuesday edition of the show, which of course means we're going to get into some stock watch after a thrilling. 37 to 34 win for the Eagles in overtime on Sunday over the Buffalo Bills. I honestly think maybe was the game of the year just from an entertainment perspective. Two of the best quarterbacks going at it. Two of the most exciting quarterbacks going at it in a second half shootout. And Gino, that's where I want to start because I don't know if you noticed, but Jalen Hurts led another comeback against a really good football team. And I think he's the MVP favorite. The betting odds say he's the favorite. And yet there are still some egregious takes out there about why he is. Have I not noticed, it Lou? Just, Come on. I know, Don't yeah, play coy. A good fight. But it is just some of the arguments are really bad, especially in a year where there's no clear-cut favorite. I don't understand the venom towards suggesting Jalen could potentially be the MVP when he's leading the 10-1 and Eagles, doing it in the fashion he has. I don't know. It just There's some bad takes out there right now. I'll tell you where the positivity pod, we're just going to continue to preach the good word of Jalen Hurts. The national media is not preaching the good word. If you believe that Hurts is the MVP, please subscribe, like, and everything to the show because we are going to be the Bible carriers of Jalen Hurts' MVP run. Because, Lou, contextually, look at what they did. I'm just looking at the NFL game stats and information, the whole behind-the-scenes stuff. Their second half, after the half ended, Lou, they went punt, Touchdown, 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 punt, field goal, touchdown in overtime. Mm-hmm. That's in the second half of and a football Jalen game Hurts where you're going against Josh Allen, who is going yeah. blow for blow Nuclear. For, against you. Yeah. And Jalen had all five touchdowns, whether it was passing or rushing. And that's not good for what reason. And we're talking about the Heisman race in college right now with Jaden Daniels versus Bo Nix. And it's like Jaden Daniels argument is all these touchdowns that he accounts for all the running touchdowns and the throwing touchdowns. It's like, why aren't we using the same argument for the most valuable player in football? And not only that, Bo Nix isn't getting as much love on a better team. And Jaden Daniels is on a worse team. And it almost feels like, we have the Jaden Daniels equivalent in Philadelphia on the better team. Yeah, it feels like Jalen is almost getting punished for winning football games because he's leading the best team in the league. There's a take I saw from one of our guys on the network where it's he's only going to win based off of team wins, right? Which is oh, not a Peter Bukowski. Stat. Yeah, our boy Peter Skip Bukowski. Skip Bayless, <laughs> Nick Wright. So that to me, first off, winning against these good teams that he has in comeback shootout fashion should absolutely be a positive, huge argument for why he should be MVP. I don't think that's something that should discredit his case, but let's also not act like he's being carried and his numbers stink. And it's only about wins. Like this is some Kenny Pickett type of player. If you remove interceptions, which I think you have to in this MVP conversation, because they've all got him right now. This guy is second in total touchdowns with 29. He almost has a 68% completion percentage. He's on pace for over 4,000 passing yards, nearly 5,000 scrimmage yards. When trailing in the second half this year, he's number one in QBR, number one in touchdowns, second in yards per attempt. He's got elite pocket passing numbers. What more do you want from this guy? I just, yes, he's had some slow starts in games, but last year was their blowing out average team, so that's why they discredit this football team this year. That's because they're winning close against really good teams. I don't know. I, don't, I just don't know what you want from this team and this quarterback. And we got reporters out here posting point differentials like it's the EPL on the last day. And what was the stat I saw from PFF? Noise canceling score, which removes turnovers. These, it's, it's getting ridiculous. outrageous, man. Folks, I have a master's degree in accounting. I am certified in analytics through a business school over in England. I'm the biggest analytic on the globe, but if your eyes don't match the numbers, yeah, man, you got to test the way, data. The way numbers right now, people are trying to spin numbers to form, to back up narratives, and so they're not wrong, is getting out of hand. 
there's always a way to cherry pick anybody. Oh, I you mean, can twist any stat, any number. And, and the argument, or you can just of, create them. Like you know, they're making up stats. Yes, noise canceling noise score. Uh, what like, the hell is that? by Bose. Like what is that? No free Dude. shout outs. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous at this point. But the the thing with. Bukowski too. his argument back to me was, oh, you have to incorporate the negative plays. It's like Josh Allen also had an interception in that game. Patrick Mahomes is close to the top of the league in interceptions. So is Lamar Jackson. We are using the Brett Favre MVP narrative against what an MVP should be. An MVP, in my opinion, Lou, is, yeah, he might take a step back, but he's going to launch your team 20,000 steps forward with what he can do. That throw to Olamide Zacchaeus, Lou, in the calmness, in the chaos, that's what's so good about Jalen. He is calm in the chaos. That's what I'm going to continue to coin the phrase of what he is great at. And not only that, he's not padding his stats against bad teams. He's having bad first halves. Who wins games in the well, first let's half? Let's be real. Gino, he's had a couple bad first halves. People act yeah. like he hasn't been good in full games all year. Both Washington games, he was great all game. Against Miami, he was great all game. Against mm-hmm. L.A., Tampa Bay, Dallas. Meanwhile, he's hurting all these games, I'd like to mention, too. So to act like... And yes, let's no- contextualize it. Yeah. Lane is out of the game. Dallas is out of the game. Sure. You're in yeah. the elements. You throw the ball three times in the first drive of the game. Yeah. Things weren't good. Going great. It wasn't all on him. Yes, was he not perfect? Was he perfect when it mattered? That's all I care about. That's the definition to me of value, right? Is like I saw Nick Wright today make a take that he's the most clutch player in the league, but he's not the MVP. Isn't the biggest sign of value when you're clutch late in games? That's yes. when you step up. I don't know. To 100%. me, like no. You're, again, Luke, the arguments yes. man are crazy. When you, this is a basic context thing in scouting. There's a big thing where it's called money downs. You're going to chart those completely separately. Third yeah. and fourth down, late in games. You turn oh, by the way, the they're tape. number one in third and fourth down offenses here. So. Yeah, in the red zone, they're from like bottom of the league to fifth right yeah, now. And they're 100% months. in the last two weeks. And why is that? It's because of the guy throwing the football. I'm with Stop you, invalidating him. Stop invalidating him. And he's not a bet. He's a, he's what you want the face of the league to be. He is what you want the face of the league to be. And he doesn't have a little brother that's doing these ridiculous TikToks where he's dancing on uh, somebody's <laughs> logo because he's a, the brother of somebody and they don't have the Taylor Swift. It's it's just because it's Philadelphia and people want to hate on him. I think that's and a huge part of it. Yeah, they want to get this base to going. Be. For sure. Yeah. I totally agree with that. And they're even discrediting like the rushing numbers because of the brotherly shove. Eight touchdowns of his 11 or one-yard touchdowns. But, you know, even with that, it's like – He's the reason they drove down to the one. So how can you take that away as if that doesn't count like it's an empty net goal in hockey? And if you don't think he would score it another way if they weren't doing the brotherly shove, like have you not seen some of his passing touchdowns to OZ? The throw to Devontae Smith was a dime in triple coverage. Most just, probable completion of the entire that's week. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you think that he's only he's a product of this brotherly shove, which, by the way, is led by him. Nobody else can do it as well as him. So he's not a product of that play. He is that play. It's just, again, the takes have been really bad. And I don't hear a lot of good counters to why Jalen's not the guy, but therefore Mahomes is or Lamar is. It's just why mm-hmm. Hurts isn't the MVP. Yes, it's and the trying arguments to are discredit just not good. him. Yes, yes. And back to scouting, anybody can find what somebody does bad, but only those who really pay attention can find what the people do good. And that's exactly, and and it's not hard to see what you turn on a highlight package of him. You don't even need to go far to find what he does really, really well. And we're not blind either. Like, yes, he has turned the ball over this year more than last year. There's been some really bad halves. I thought last game in the first half, that was the worst I've seen him since probably 2021. But again, when you compare him to the other candidates right now, I don't know who has a better case. My, If I had a vote, it would be on Jalen, and that removes my Eagles bias 100%. Because if it was Lamar Jackson, it has I would to. be saying it's Lamar Jackson. Trust me. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you on that, Lou. And, and the thing is, if you're going to just preach the word of Josh Allen, and you have to after last game, right? Like, he mm-hmm. did a lot of things that elevated that team. Oh, he but he also has the most amount of turnovers in the first mm-hmm. six years of the NFL. But who cares? Who cares? Literally, if this guy is carrying you, your quarterback is carrying you yeah. to victory time and time again. Who literally cares about the bad plays until they start to cost you games? And he isn't not making it up. 
like Carson Wentz, like the guy that we literally just had before him who had an MVP campaign. And then when the snowball started to come down the hill, it turned into an avalanche. Instead, Jalen Hurts has climbed Mount Everest, dude. He is at the top of the mountain right now. Like this is what those who thought he could be this good himself, Nick Saban, everybody in the Eagles organization, I'm sure, believed he could get to this point. And to discredit him, it's disvaluing what football is in this modern day, how good it is, how many great athletes there are on the field that he still has to go out there and do this. I love your point about empty net goals. It's not like you look at Wayne Gretzky and they have a asterisk like, this is the amount of empty net goals right. he has. This is the amount of one-yard yeah, brotherly shoves. The, I don't consider the brotherly shove play. Uh, Tom Brady and Drew Brees anyway. did it forever. Get right. out of and here. other Just quarterbacks are not here. doing it as well this year. So, yeah, I think Jalen Hurts is the favorite to be MVP. Look, you could make the case for somebody else, and you just have to make a good case, and I'm not seeing good arguments right now. It just feels like it's clickbait, especially from the national media against Mm -hmm. Jalen and some other fan bases. So I just, yeah, I think Jalen Hurts is your MVP right now. Stock up after that huge win against the Buffalo Bills. Who else's stock is up after a massive win over Buffalo? We'll get into that coming up next right here on the Locked On Eagles podcast. Today's episode of the Locked On Eagles podcast is brought to you by Game Time. You should not have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and even theater events near you. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on your tickets. Again, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use our promo code LOCKEDONNFL, which is in all caps, LOCKEDONNFL, for $20 off your first purchase. We know how expensive tickets can be. 20 bucks off, that's huge. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem that code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. We thank you so much for making Locked On Eagles your first listen each and every day. It's a Tuesday edition of the show. Guys, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. On today's edition of Locked On Eagles, it's time for Stock Watch. Let's see who else shined against the Buffalo Bills. 30 Seven thirty four was the final. A big win in overtime. The Eagles ten and one. They got the 49ers coming to town on Sunday. Cannot wait for that big game, which we'll dive into all the storylines on tomorrow's show. But want to take one final look at that game against Buffalo. And Gino, it wasn't just Jalen Hurts that shined. When you look at that offense, two guys that stood out that we mentioned on Monday's show were almost as clutch as QB one, and it was Devontae Smith and DeAndre Swift. Devontae Smith, 92 receiving yards in that half. DeAndre Swift, 73 total scrimmage yards. They've stepped up in back-to-back weeks in the second half in two of the biggest games of the year against Kansas City and Buffalo. I mean, those two, the clutch gene from this entire team is unbelievable. The it factor, just coming up in big games. And yeah, DeAndre Swift, where do you go to school, Lou? Yeah, Georgia. I mean, they've all played in big schools, man, in big games. SEC. It, yeah. it just makes sense. Howie Roseman, keep it simple, stupid. He got back to what works, and that's really what I think it is, Lou. It's like these guys, when you're talking about like, the mental toughness of what it takes to play SEC football, they were at the top. They made plays in big-time games. Yeah. Why shouldn't that translate to this level? You look at guys like, let's say, Jalen Rager, for example, he played at TCU, no fault of his own, but that's not SEC football. It frankly yeah. isn't. And J.J. Ortega, Whiteside, I mean, coming out of Stanford, Pac-12 is not SEC football. It's just a different mentality. It's a different way to approach the game. And just being calm in the chaos is really what I think it comes down to, man. Like, Devontae might be, outside of Jalen, the next like smoothest sailor on the team who like doesn't waver when there it comes were some to, tough like, receptions he made in the rain too. Yeah. We, I, I Lou, I have, I have a qualm. We can put satellites like way into the universe. Right. But we can't create gloves that work well when it is raining out. That's I don't point. understand yeah. that. 
Well, that's why Devontae, a lot of time when it's raining, does not wear gloves. I think against he, New England. He was this wearing year, them though. He was wearing them this time, but against yep. New England week one, he wasn't. Against Jacksonville last year, he doesn't wear the gloves. But regardless, man, he made some. I mean, the touchdown too across his body, three guys around mm-hmm. with contact. He made two huge receptions to convert first downs over the middle in overtime. Again, 92 receiving yards in the second half against Buffalo. He had 88 against Kansas City the week before. He has over 400 receiving yards the last five weeks. He's really heating up and. He's stepping up when he has to. Dallas Scotter's mm-hmm. down. A.J. Brown's getting a lot more right. attention. They've needed number six, and he has delivered. And he really always does. So, as mm-hmm. you said, he's been doing this since Alabama. There's been no reason to doubt it. Yeah, it's kind of that Splash Brothers element with him and A.J. He's when... going to get a huge contract this year. Oh, yeah. And you should pay him right now. Because I agree. He, it's just going to keep going up. But it's like when Clay and Steph, it's like when one of them can't drain their threes, you got to hope the other one can drain their threes. And yeah. dude, Devontae, I he love really making is that the Clay Thompson but... of the NFL, isn't it? Yeah, no, he kind of is like a little slender, like not appreciated as the guy, but still just as nearly as good, like a 1B yeah. type. I mean, right now he's a 1A, Lou, in the last two weeks in the second half of games. Who has been better than him from Nobody. a wide receiver standpoint? I don't know if there's many clutch, more clutch receivers in football. Than Devonte Smith Jr. at 165 and, pounds, which know, is it's insane. His catch radius is. It's like you out there, Lou. Control. Like you imagine you going out there across the middle no, of the I field. I could not imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Stock up to Devonte Smith and DeAndre Swift. Gino, who else we got? I've given him a lot of crap, and mm-hmm. I, I think I've been very Give the man critical his of him. I I will send him a full bouquet, but I I'm very critical of people that I've seen greatness in, and this is kind of how I coach my kids. I in critique because I care. Like, I critique because I care. That's a great way to look at it. Dude, Brian Johnson in the second half, what he did was absolutely remarkable. From where they were in the beginning of the season, when it came to red zone play calling, they're at the bottom. They're like 27th in the league. Right now they're fifth. Yeah, They are at some crazy levels of efficiency right now, Lou. In the red zone, they're fifth at 62.79%. On third downs, they are third at 47.3%. On fourth down, Lou, they are number one at 76.47%. And why is that? Brian Johnson has kind of figured it out at times. He's getting some head coaching heat right now, it sounds like. Apparently, according to Adam Schefter, there is some high regard for Brian Johnson. And that's why, at times, it may seem like I'm critical of these guys. Like, Mike Clay, I I definitely get on him, but I don't think he's ever going to be head coach. Brian Johnson... Yeah, yeah, like you got to be accountable for will. these moments if you want to be a head coach, right? Like that's why Jonathan Gannon, if he wanted to get there, we never saw that he could get to that point because he couldn't do that. Shane, 100%. Mm-hmm. Brian Johnson is starting to take those steps that you saw in that second year of Shane Steichen, in my I opinion, agree. where you're Let's starting to see the efficiency is yes, what we were waiting for. 100% in the red zone over the last two weeks, Lou, against Kansas City, Buffalo. And Buffalo. Yeah, that's tough. You needed that. Two really good defenses, good defensive minds, Spagnola and McDermott. Yeah, I agree. It's been impressive over the last couple of weeks from Brian Johnson. Also got to give a shout out to Jack Driscoll. Gino, last second Definitely. start was terrible against the New York Jets. Everybody's, including me, calling for Tyler Steen when the game starts. Like, please do not put Driscoll back out there. And yet, only one hurry and one pressure allowed on 39 pass blocking reps. And that's a underrated pass rushing unit. The mm-hmm. Buffalo Bills were top three in sacks heading yep. into that football game. And Driscoll in the rain, too, playing, you know, Von Miller is a shell of who he was, but still a solid player. Greg Rizzo, I mean, that's a deep front, and he really held his own. Shout out to Driscoll. That's a big spot. I think that f- first hurry and the only pressure came on the very first play of the game. Yeah. I think when uh, it was, it was, it was Rousseau off play. of the yeah, edge. There. It was. Yeah. And he really settled in. I mean, that that's a big testament, too, because – the report was all week that Lane practice. He mm-hmm. didn't really make it known that anything happened. Then he woke up Sunday and yeah, Jack's probably like, I'm going to go about my regular prepare to be the backup uh, routine. And then all of a sudden he comes to Lincoln financial field. And it's like, all right, you're out there with uh, Cam Jurgens right now, taking combo block reps with Jeff Stoutland. And the entire front office was standing there watching that happen right what a spot to jump into i mean nick seriani gave him his praises in his post-game press conference i don't think that's like that can be understood it's it's almost like in the ufc for example lou in a championship fight the day before the fight one of the competitors pulls out and somebody else steps in and they go the full distance with that with that competitor 
yeah. that's really what Jack Driscoll did. He he got some punches right in his face on that first rep, and he settled in. Was the run to the right side so great in that game? No, they kind of had to go away they from it to find some to success. Yeah, for sure. But when it came to the bigger worry for me from Jack Driscoll's perspective was the yeah. pass blocking. And when Jalen started to trust that Jack was that's in there, settled in. that's when he settled in. When he didn't drop his eyes, when he could sit in the pocket and let things develop downfield, that's when they yeah. found success. Hats off to uh, big Auburn boy on that side. Not a lot of stock ups on defense, Gino, but I want to talk about the corners. I thought Darius Slay and James Bradbury, all things considered, really held their own. Slay was Slay's shadowing. Been hooping, man. Yeah, He's he had to hooping. shadow Diggs the entire game, and he came through. He allowed just one catch for 22 yards on five targets. And look, James Bradbury, he got attacked as he usually does, 13 targets, allowed six receptions, 62 yards, a touchdown, four first downs. But he made some clutch plays. I mean, those two huge pass breakups and the interception in the second half we're in massive spots. And say what you will about Bradbury, he has not been great this year at times, but he's made some clutch plays now on big spots against Washington, Dallas, Buffalo. So, again, yes, he's allowing a lot more than Slay is, but he's still coming up big in late in games. Slay was on a podcast, and they were talking about how when he came here in 2020, he's like, man, they haven't had anybody since Sante. And then I remembered, I'm like, how bad was it before? Like, James Bradbury, even – not being as good as he was in 2022 is okay, so much better than any option we would so have. Much, it's even it's still better than anything you had from 2017 to 2020. W- without a doubt, I mean, without yeah. a shadow of a doubt. And yeah. Darius Slay, give him his flowers, man. I think he's still underappreciated in the national perspective. Ever since he was in Detroit, ever since he came here, and then he shadows the Stefan Diggs, the entire something we've game, been dude. calling for. And Sean I, know, I was so happy was like, to see him just on him the whole. He's game. finally yes. like, you know what? Let's put our best corner on their best weapon and it. see what happens. It's so and, frustrating when teams don't do it. It's so obvious to do that. But that's a good thing to know, though, Lou. Like on offense, how you know that you can win with your pass offense, your your yeah. run offense. That's good to know that you have that counter punch in your arsenal where it's like, okay, we could line the guys up on the side if that's what it really comes to. I think against San Francisco, that might be the perspective that you want to approach it with. Yeah. But going into this game and probably going against Dallas, it's like, CD yeah, Lamb, one Darius Slay, that's yes, going to be the match. Just matchup. don't let that guy beat us. I think they've done a great job two weeks in a row now with that strategy with Kelsey and Diggs. Do you know who else you got for stock up before we take a break? Brayton Covey. I mean, how many times has he really put this team into good field position he over last the last week, couple yeah. weeks? Somebody made a point on Twitter. It's like, is he the best returner in the National Football League right now? And well, he you has can make the second the most 20-plus yard returns in the league, and he was first heading into the game against Buffalo, so you could make the case. And in those conditions, too, and there were times when his blocking wasn't great on punt block, yeah. and he's done a great job. And I think special teams as a whole, Braden Mann, is exponentially better than Aaron Sipos. Oh, he why had a we great ever, game, by the way. Why we ever had an argument that Sipos was going to be the guy because he can hold the football – Okay, I think what we saw in the 59-yarder from Jake Elliott in the conditions from Braden Mann after Braden Mann had four punts of over 55 yards was yeah. pretty good. I agree, Gino. One final shout-out to stock up to Jordan Davis. Fletcher Cox goes down. Milton Williams already was not playing. Jalen Carter's a little banged up in this football game. Davis basically plays the entire game in late in, what, the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. This guy clocks in at 17 miles per hour, chasing down one of the best mobile quarterbacks of all time on a scramble drill to force a third and long. I mean, this dude is an absolute unicorn. And shout out to Davis for being in the shape that he is right now. 330 pounds, what, 6'5"? For him to be able to do that was unreal. That's literally a golf cart, like, running at you. <laughs> it's a building at 17 at miles <laughs> an hour. And I think we have to give one final... I mean, yeah. this this should be like our golden thumbs up of the decade. I Brandon agree. Graham becoming yep. the all-time tenured Eagle and making arguably one of the biggest sacks of the season. And some elite and trash talking. putting his, whew, whatever you want to call him, in a wheelbarrow and saying, it don't matter. It don't matter. We got Jalen Hurts. We're going to go win this game. Yeah. What what a testament to this team. It's it's really fun to support this franchise right now. Yeah. And after watching Monday Night Football, Lou, I am truly grateful that we support this team. I agree. There's some bad football being played in the NFL, not in Philadelphia at least. Could they get even better? Shaq Leonard, sounds like the Eagles might have some interest. We'll get into that coming up next right here on the Lockdown Eagles podcast. 
this edition and every single edition of Locked On Eagles and every show here at the Locked On Podcast Network is brought to you by our friends over at America's number one sports book. It is FanDuel. I'm telling you, I have had the wager in the future on Jalen Hurts MVP since before the season began. But you can get in now before he truly becomes the favorite. And all new customers, you can also get $150 back in bonus bets with any $5 money line bet. If you know, and I think we all do, that the Philadelphia Eagles are going to beat San Francisco and Brock Purdy. Once again, you're going to put a $5 money line wager on the Eagles this weekend, and FanDuel is going to give you $150 bucks back in bonus bets that you can then spend on Jalen Hurts MVP futures, Jalen Carter, Defensive Rookie of the Year futures, player props, over-unders, all that and more. Go to FanDuel.com slash on and keep the NFL season rolling. Make sure you put in that promo code Locked On if you are on the app. It is L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, one final segment here on this Tuesday edition of Locked On Eagles. Got some news for the birds right now, Gino. Zach Cunningham injured with a hamstring, mm-hmm. went out of that game on Sunday. We knew before that the Colts had waived Shaq Leonard, was not happy with his role, a former All-Pro linebacker. Not the same player he was, but still a solid guy. To me, when Cunningham was healthy, I said, I don't know, feels kind of redundant. I'm okay with Cunningham and Morrow. I don't know if I'd sign Shaq Leonard. Mm-hmm. But now that Cunningham's down, does sound like the Eagles have some added interest, according to multiple reports. He is meeting with the Dallas Cowboys first. It sounds like the Eagles intend to meet with him, potentially. Nothing scheduled yet. Going to see if he gets a deal with Dallas. If not, the Eagles may have a shot. To me, like it's, I'm not really, if they sign him, cool. If not, whatever. I just kind of want to know what Cunningham's injury is first before mm-hmm. making a decision, because if he's going to be back in a week or two, again, I would take Shaq Leonard, but I don't think it's the end of the world if he signs somewhere else. The big thing is, like, what's the status on N'Kobe Dean? Because they do have this well, that rule too. that you can come off of the IR twice now in one season. I'll and... tell you what, though. I do not want Christian Ellis out there. So No, it, he is Cunningham's unwatchable. If going to be out for a while, then, yeah, sure, Shaq Leonard. Dude, I, I can't watch him run himself into the first block and Isn't just crazy? He made the not team get off the block. Nicholas Morrow and was even intended to play more than Cunningham at one point. It, I mean, yeah, crazy. I mean, in the first game of the season, Lou, he, he took he was a majority there. of the snaps. Oh, and. God. The thing with Leonard is, are, are we solving the coverage linebacker? No, not at all. No, we That's are definitely right. he, He's not. kind of the same thing as what you already have in Morrow and Cunningham. Right, like come downhill, fill yeah. your gap. Morrow's been expo- like exponentially better getting to the quarterback. And like sure. when he's on blitzes, he's a really key element to this team. He's been a hard, hard-nosed guy this year, plugging gaps too. And I think Leonard would give you that element. And mm. you would kind of have to get by using your now three – really good safeties that have yep. been playing pretty much a lot better than they were a couple weeks ago to be in coverage more. Sidney Brown has, he's been better than he was and Kevin Byard has been getting better and Reed Blankenship is still all world. And you got to step up in those moments when you don't have a guy like that. And Shaq Leonard, would he fix a problem for you? I think so. I think it would one, keep him out of the hands of the Dallas Cowboys Two, keep you from ever having to put Christian Ellis on the field. I, I think it's just, yeah. uh, you could get by, but for like ten snaps. But like after that, right. it, it's not. It, it was evident that Buffalo was running to him right after when him. they no, pulled off three runs of over ten yards. Something that has not happened on the Eagles' rush defense all year long. Who was in yeah, the middle of the field and whose gap was it? it? It was Christian Ellis. Yeah, I agree. We'll see what happens. Again, he has a visit. I think today actually with the Cowboys. And then the Eagles have some interest. We'll see if they do meet with him or if he doesn't even leave Texas without a deal. So we'll see what happens there. We'll keep you updated right here on Lockdown Eagles. One final thing before we go, Dallas Goddard. It actually does sound like he's pushing to play against the 49ers, Gino, which is huge. It has been by that Sunday. It will have been four weeks since the Cowboys game, which it, the timetable was, what, four to six weeks. So they never place him on IR, though. I think they intended him to come back sooner mm-hmm. rather than later with that time frame. So it sounds pretty encouraging that Dallas might be back for a really big game. I'll be intrigued to see how they approach it because yeah. – it is a four, like it seems like it broke right in the middle of the forearm. So would they just cast it up to the fingers and Probably. hope that he could catch? I mean, if there is a significant chance that it can get re-injured, I think just got to be careful with this team, with the comments the 49ers yeah. made this offseason. Yeah, I, I 
this is going to be a physical game, man. Yeah. It's going it's going to get rough at times, and but you can use not your big tight end. You I'll tell you arm. that, right? I mean, oh yeah, use Goddard in that kind of you definitely situation. can, and it would be awesome to see him back because you know that this team on the other side of the football has just as many weapons as you do. You're going to need them all. You're truly going to need them all. It's going to be a, a fantastic game, though, from just personnel on the field, from a storyline standpoint. Yeah. I think we all know that the NFC. we would take number one as the guy always over the other guy. So, uh, we'll yeah, let's continue that. that. We'll dive into the Eagles 49ers storylines tomorrow. We've got the crossover Thursday with Brian Peacock of Locked On Niners on Thursday. Friday show for you as well. Make sure you subscribe to Locked On Eagles for your daily podcast each and every day, Monday through Friday, right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. That's going to do it for today's edition of the show. Guys, make sure, again, you go over and check out our 24-7 Locked On Sports Today YouTube channel. For Gino Camilleri, though, on Locked On Eagles, I'm Lou DiBiase signing off. As always, thank you for downloading, thank you for watching and listening, and let's go, Birds. Fly, Eagles, fly.